thanks for staying with us. For more on our top stories and others, please visit our website. It's channelcv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device. Log on to m.channelcv.com or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Having the Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the iWeekness feature so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. The Kwara State Independent Electoral Commission, uh, Commissioner, Mr. Utman Adigaba, has made it clear that they are generating revenue, they are a generating revenue agency. The chairman explains that all aspirants will be required to show proof of their tax certificate. We have discovered some anom anomalies, so much anomalies. We are the Quarter State Independent Electoral Commission is now giving a new, a different law. We are a councillorship candidate, chairmanship candidates. We have to pay a different tax in order to obtain tax and to make that person to contest election. In the modern Nigeria, I don't think the electoral law of Kwara State is bigger than the national electoral law. We are not tax collectors. We are election managers. What we have said and which we have documented properly is that whoever wants to contest should come, obtain form, and one of the criteria for the aspirant is that he should produce tax clearance. The Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has described the banning of the group known as the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOP, by governors of the Southeast states and the labeling of the group as a terrorist organization by the Nigerian military as unconstitutional. In a press statement by, signed by the Senate President, he explained that the laws make clear provision for taking such actions and without due process, being fo due process has to be followed. If not, such declaration cannot have effect. He, however, commended Nigerians for not allowing the crisis to degenerate any further. In his words, and I quote, At this point, Nigerians outside the southeast who have worked to ensure that the crisis does not spread to other parts of the country deserve our commendation. I therefore call for continued efforts to sustain peace, unity, and stability in all our communities so as to ensure that all residents, no matter their religion, tribe, and creed, remain protected and safe under the law. End of quote. The Senate President says he is sure that the President will do the needful by initiating the right process as to go a long way in demonstrating to the world at large that Nigeria operates by laid down process under every circumstance. Now, it's not just the Senate President that has aired his view about that matter. It has generated several reactions from different individuals and groups in the country. And joining us today from the nation's capital, Abuja, to discuss this is Mr. Kpelumi Olajem Gwesi. He's a human rights lawyer. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Yeah, thank you very much. What do you think about this development? Uh, well, the, the development we're seeing recently, in every democracy, in every democracy, uh, the principle of rule of law is of utmost importance. And every government must ensure that the whole of government business must be in confines with the rule of law. And so what we have seen recently, particularly as it affects the crisis between IPOB and the Nigerian Army, is a fragrant abuse of our law. It ultravires the provision of our constitution and other penal law that guides the operation of the Nigerian government and, of course, the Nigerian army. The Nigerian army invaded IPOP, labeled IPOP a terrorist group. The law has made provision on how to go about this. To start with, number one, the Nigerian army does not have the right to do the carry out the assignment they did because it is solely an exclusive assignment of the Nigerian police force. 
And so the Nigerian army cannot take over the assignment, the responsibility of the Nigerian police force in an attempt to make the government or in an attempt to glorify a particular person. So I believe strongly that what the Nigerian women has done is against our law. And it's very, very dangerous for our democracy because it's a monkey of the system of government we practice in the, in the general public and, of course, in the global world. We, in a situation whereby we are seen to abuse the law. Or when you look at the grants or the reasons why the Nigerian army labeled this organization a terrorist group, you will understand that all of these reasons are not within, they are not within the confines of the law. The law made it very, very clear that for an organization to be proscribed or to be labeled as a terrorist organization, there are procedures that must be followed. Number one, the Inspector General of Police or the AG, that's the Attorney General of Police, or the NSC, the National Security Advisor, is supposed to prepare an application to the courts. And the judge in chamber can grant that application. However, such an application must receive the endorsement of the president. And that's the provision of the law. As the judge has the responsibility to check the basis and the grants of this application. We must be able to differentiate between civil disobedience and, of course, um, civil disobedience and terrorism. There are, laws in, there are laws on ground to checkmate people who have done things that are contrary to our laws. We have the, we have the law that has to do with uh, treason. We have the law that has to do with murder. We have the law that has to do with civil disobedience and all of that. So I believe strongly that if an individual or a group of individuals has done something contrary to our laws, such people must be treated within the confines of the law. However, proscribing the organization or declaring the organization is a deliberate celebration of ignorance, which is very very terrible. So I think it is important that the Nigerian government should review our action. The Nigerian army quickly rushed to the public to declare this organization a terrorist group without consulting the requirement, the position of the law, to understand what exactly should be done. Now, in my own view, I believe that this is a pressure group who they have a responsibility to make demands. Looking at some of the statements and some of the actions of IPOP, talking about hoisting um, their flag in public. But what about where, Mr. Olaja what, what, what I, I, I need to come in here. What about when, where safety is concerned? This is not the first Python dance the Nigerian army had. This is the second, and the rationale is to flush out criminals from the southeast. Yeah, the business of the Nigerian army is not to flush out criminals in the society. The Nigerian police force have an exclusive duty, looking at our constitution section 215 sub 3 specifically, mandated the Nigerian police force with the instruction of the Nigerian president to ensure that public safety and of property is guaranteed, is secured in our society. So when you talk about public safety, it is, a, it is an exclusive assignment that's been invested in the Nigerian police force. The Nigerian army can't take over the Nigerian police force. They were not trained to, to work or to work within the human or the community system. They are trained to fight war. So it is only in a situation where there's insurrection, that is when the Nigerian army can step in with the direction of the president. However, when you, when you are talking about public safety, the Nigerian police force is an organization where you look at the Nigerian police, act, they have the sole responsibility to ensure that there is public safety is guaranteed. And all of this must be done within the confines of our law. But what we about, the, what about the Southeast governors? They did what they did in the interest of the people. The, the Southeast governors? Yes. Uh, well, what the Southeast governor did also is, is political anyway, but it's not in confines with the law. The Southeast governor declared in public that IPOP activities have been proscribed. In the first place, IPOP was not registered under the Southeast governor. The Southeast governor is not, is not a constitutional organization, is not the constitution of Nigeria. The Southeast governor does have no business. Our law says that every group of persons have a right to organize themselves, have a right to freedom of association, and they have a right of expression. However, in the course of carrying out all of this right, if there's any way they've actually breached the laws of the land, the Nigerian police force have a duty to arrest such person, investigate such an act, and also prosecute such person. When you look at uh, a situation whereby the uh, Inam Dekanu as a person is going through a prosecutorial process, I think it is important that we allow this process to continue, that I'm jumping the guns and doing some of the things we are doing currently. So the, and the Southeast governor also did that uh, from, their own, from their own thinking, but it was quite wrong. It's against our law, it's against our constitution, and it has no place in the history of Nigerian politics. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We have been speaking with human rights lawyer, Mr. Pelumi Olaja Ngesi.
And still to come on the program, the residents of Olowora community in Lagos are asking the Lagos state government to come to their aid. We'll give you details of that story and others when we return. Stay with us.